What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Daniel Cormier reacts to Dustin Poirier's sad news. Dustin Poirier raised eyebrows recently by admitting UFC 302 could mark the last time we see the Diamond compete, and Daniel Cormier isn't happy about the revelation for a couple of reasons. Poirier is preparing to face lightweight king Islam Makachev at the June 1st event, which is going down in Newark, New Jersey. As the fight approaches, Poirier has been candid about the fact that he could hang up the gloves afterward, win or lose. The fan favorite is now 35 years old, and Poirier has challenged for the undisputed lightweight belt twice before and he failed to secure the title then. Well, recently, Cormier responded to Poirier's comments via his YouTube channel. While doing so, the Hall of Famer outlined why he's concerned about Poirier's mindset as UFC 302 approaches. Dustin Poirier is speaking about this almost being his last dance. I hate that. I, I, I honestly cannot stand that. I can't stand hearing it's almost over for a guy that we all universally love and enjoy when he's inside the octagon. I also hate it for another reason, that it could be almost over and he recognizes that because I did it myself. So I'm almost judging myself. I don't love when athletes put a timeline or a finishing point on a career that's still actively going on. The life after the fight, when you look at it from the inside and you're going through those training camps and everything's so tough, the other side seems very nice. It really does open up a world that the active fighter should never really think about. If you've been following MMA for a little while now, you'll understand why Cormier feels the way he does. When DC was still competing, he repeatedly said for years he was not going to fight beyond the age of 40. But after he was taken out by Stipe Miocic in their 2019 rematch, Cormier returned for the rubber match at the age of 41. The former champ champ lost via decision and walked away from the game with consecutive losses. So, does the Diamond already have one foot out the fighting door? Could June 1st mark the end of his awe-inspiring career? We'll find out soon enough. Alex Pajeda brutally beats opponent in sparring. Alex Pajeda has violently demonstrated innumerable times that he's a very, very scary and bad man in the cage or the ring. But not surprisingly, Poetan is not someone to be messed with in the gym either. Recently, the decorated fighter and current UFC light heavyweight champ shared footage of him sparring at Glover Teixeira's gym in Connecticut. After Pajeda fired in some hard-looking shots to the body, his sparring partner began throwing bigger punches in return. As a result, the sparring session heated up real quick, and Pajeda proceeded to batter his opponent with some wince-inducing shots. Following the clip, the Brazilian star also posted an image of his teammate. Let's just call him that, looking worse for wear. Poetan also posted in Portuguese, returning to training. Now, it's been interesting to see some of the takes online, with some people attacking Pajeda for what unfolded. But what's your opinion? Should the sparring partner have known better and not wing some big punches at the champ? Or was Pajeda going too hard from the get-go? All that aside, it'll be interesting to see if we get a confirmation soon on who is going to be Pajeda's next fight. After he bombed out Jamal Hill in April, Pajeda said he was interested in pursuing the heavyweight crown next. But given that John Jones vs. Stipe Miocic is expected to take place in November, and because Tom Aspinall is set to fight Curtis Blades in July, one would think the UFC will call on Fajeda to defend the light heavyweight belt. Could Magomed Ankalaev get the call? Up next, Jan Blahovic calls out Kamaru Usman. Kamaru Usman moved up to middleweight for a short notice fight last time out, but could the former welterweight champ compete at light heavyweight next? Sounds nuts, right? Well, following comments Usman recently made about Jan Blachowicz, the former champ said he'd be happy to welcome the Nigerian nightmare to the light heavyweight division. So how did this all kick off? Well, during a recent episode of the Pound for Pound show, Usman and Cejudo reflected on a time when Kamaru Usman faced off with Jan Blachowicz. Based on that encounter, Usman believes he sizes up just fine with the wielder of Polish power. Yeah, I will stick on him. I'm telling you. See, this is the thing. I wouldn't have called for 205, listen, if I didn't think at that point that the style favored me and I could do it. You know, it was just a matter of, listen, everybody's got power when the fight starts, but you grab your leg and you t you drag them down once, twice, and, and yeah. you make them work up and work up. Yeah. The fight completely changes. And that's exactly what I was going to do. Glover Teixeira did the exact same thing to him. Yeah. Well, Usman's comments got back to Blahovic, who responded with this social media call out. If you still feel the same about it, Kamaru Usman, let's go. I will be ready. How about that for an unexpected call out? Could it happen? While there's no doubt, it would be fascinating to see how Usman looks at 205, the chances of this fight happening next seem pretty slim. 
Blahovich is currently ranked number 4 in the UFC's light heavyweight division, so a fight with Usman doesn't really do much for him in his hunt to reclaim the title. Further, even if Usman went up to light heavyweight and beat Jan, then what? Could he hang with the likes of Magomed on Kalaev or Yuri Prohaska? In other words, if Usman has closed the door on fighting at welterweight, you would think the UFC would rather match him up against another top middleweight. Usman hung in there with Hamza Chimaev, and many believe if the fight had been five rounds, he might have won it. Now, let's take a look at Islam Makachev praises Dustin Poirier. Islam Makachev is a massive favorite to retain the lightweight title at UFC 302, but the champion continues to insist he has extensive respect for Dustin Poirier. Even if Daniel Cormier recently accused the renowned fighter of going overboard with his praise for the diamond, Makachev recently appeared on the Good Guy Bad Guy podcast, and after reporting he respects Poirier, as well as the star's guillotine choke, Cormier called him out over the comments. The smiling champion conceded that maybe he's not too worried about Poirier's guillotine choke, but doubled down on his comments about respecting the contender. Well, in another interview that Makachev did with Sport24, once again, Islam felt the need to insist he has nothing but respect for his next opponent. While speaking in Russian, Makachev reportedly said the following when asked about Poirier's guillotine attempt on Khabib Nurmagomedov. Yes, I gave my neck a lot in training. You need to find yourself in the positions that your opponent is in so that it doesn't come as a surprise to you in the fight. The media made a big joke out of this that I was joking about his guillotines. No, I'm telling the truth that I think he has a pretty good guillotine and we're working hard on it. And when asked to comment on the argument Makachev should be able to duplicate what Habib did against Poirier, the champ cautioned against the theory. This is a big mistake. I don't know. Maybe some kind of bookmaker games, but underestimating Dustin is stupid in general. We have seen his last fight. It was the same thing. Everyone didn't give Dustin any chance. Is Makachev truly dialed in for this fight and not looking past Poirier? As he himself noted, it would be foolish if he is. Joaquin Buckley and Cub Swanson go back and forth. Joaquin Buckley took quite a bit of heat for how he called out Conor McGregor after his latest victory, and now the welterweight's under fire once again for comments he made about George St. Pierre. All the drama kicked off when Buckley posted a video of GSP fighting BJ Penn, and then made the claim he would have KO'd the legend if they had fought when they were both 30. Not gonna lie, if me and GSP fought at the same age, 30, I'd knock out the GOAT, to be honest. Well, that comment didn't sit too well with Kevin Holland, who proceeded to remind Buckley of his 2020 stoppage win over him. Dude can't beat me, how the F he gonna beat GSP? But things really got interesting slash heated after Cub Swanson also took issue with Buckley's comment. Better men have tried and couldn't do it. To which Buckley fired back with, get your ass on a winning streak first, Cub, talking about better men. And that queued up this exchange. I'll work on that, homie. Go ahead and keep chasing clout. Just don't disrespect the legends of this sport. You haven't done enough yet. Disrespect? Nah, see, you never once been on my page, and you talking nonsense, MF. Fighters fight, and for me, GSP is the GOAT. But in my humble opinion, I'd knock GSP out at this stage of my game. Just my opinion, ho. I was being honest when I said better men have tried. You're sipping too much of your own Kool-Aid. I've been here. You just got here. Have some mother effing respect, little boy. The argument about whether Buckley was being disrespectful or not aside, would he have really beaten GSP in his prime? Of course, it's always a bit unfair to compare fighters of different generations, given that the sport and fighters continue to evolve. But has Buckley faced anyone yet with the wrestling and top game that St. Pierre possessed? Now, let's look at Chito Vera reveals next UFC fight. After dropping his rematch to Bantamweight champion Sugar Sean O'Malley, Chito Vera is going to fight another man who's hoisted UFC gold. That man is former flyweight champion Davis and Figueredo. Recently, Marcel Dorf shared out news of the matchup, which was first reported by AG Fight. The bout will be part of the UFC's August 3rd card in Abu Dhabi. Once word of the fight was shared out, Vera posted these comments. Upwards, eager to win, Chito 2.0. It's an interesting matchup, and there's a lot riding on the line. For Vera, it's an opportunity to get back to the win column following his loss to O'Malley. Since Vera's also not long ago removed from a split decision loss to Corey Sanhagen in 2021, another defeat would be a significant hit to his championship aspirations. For Figueredo, the fight serves as an opportunity to possibly move into the top five of the bantamweight division. Currently, Vera is ranked number four, while the God of War is now ranked number six due to victories over Rob Font and Cody Garbrandt, following Figueredo's move up from flyweight. With that piece of news covered, let's look at Aljamain Sterling vs. Movzar Ivloyev next? Speaking of former champions, 
there's talk that Aljamain Sterling could fight surging featherweight Movzar Ivloyev next. Sterling is coming off a successful featherweight debut as the former Bantamweight King recorded a decision victory over Calvin Cater at UFC 300. While the fight wasn't exactly one that left the MMA world buzzing, it was a key win for Sterling and moved him into the number 8 ranking. Well, according to a recent report from TASS, Ivloyev's manager is reporting negotiations are ongoing for a fight between Sterling and his client. According to his manager, Sayat, the fight's very real. Apparently, the only hurdle remaining is in regards to when the fight will go down. Of course, defeating a former champ like Sterling would be a nice addition to Ivloyev's resume. But you had to wonder if his camp would have preferred to have Ivloyev fight someone ranked in the top 5 at this juncture. Sterling is ranked number 8. After all, Ivloyev has gone 8-0 to date in the UFC, and he's now 18-0. Further, he's coming off a pivotal victory over Arnold Allen in January. Brendan Schaub threatens Joe Rogan on his recent podcast called The Fighter and the Kid. During the podcast, Brendan says that while Joe would beat any celebrity or regular person in a street fight, he believes that he would beat up even a prime Joe Rogan easily. Here's what Brendan had to say. And, and you're an open micer and Joe's a professional. He goes, what do you mean? I go, can Joe kick? Absolutely, dude. For a guy who's never competed professionally, he can kick like a mother I mean, if you put him against any celebrity out there, he's going to beat the out in black bone jiu-jitsu i don't i don't think he has any wrestling doesn't matter he's jiu-jitsu he kicks i don't know how his boxing is doesn't matter like in that like regular civilian aspect monster yep. i said you gotta realize though i was ranked top 10 in the world a heavyweight as a USC. professional a i said so it's just different and he was and even after saying all he goes how would you do i go well i beat the out of him dude i said but that uh, that's not even impressive he's also, like, he's also 57 he's also no but uh, even if he wasn't six weight classes but no, below he's that, none of that matters even, even if he was 21 in his prime he's not a fight, he's but, not a but if fighter. you're not professional john jones reveals bad news after a fan tweeted to him asking him how his pec is doing john responded to the fan by saying it's one of the most depressing injuries i've ever had push my upper body strength back by years I'm not even going to get into it, going to remain positive and keep putting in the work day by day. He replied to another fan and said, I wish I had a time machine so I could fast forward this whole thing. Never intended on getting hurt. Sorry it's taken so long. November will be here before you know it though. This comes as a shock to fans as John is already creeping up in age. Could this fight with Stipe Miocic be the last time we see John step inside a UFC octagon? Top comments. Winning the belt and only defending once or not at all and immediately asking for a shot at another belt is killing a lot of divisional movement. Going backstage and low kicking is kind of funny. Drake should have fought Sean first and if he won that, then fight Izzy. He knows he got gifted a win against Sean. Leon not scared of you dude, he just knows that he ain't making much pay-per-view money fighting you. Can't blame him.